Hi all and welcome to Six Sigma and Processi Pro TV YouTube video channel. This is uh, my second video in English about the process capability and the relevant indexes, uh, CPK and uh, PPK. Let's go to the introduction slide that you can see here. And it's called, of course, CPK and PPK process capability part two, because this video is the second one on a set of three about this topic. Let's uh, start with a summary from our previous tutorial where we have seen that given a process, uh, per each sample drawn from that process, uh, uh, we are able to obtain a distribution of data. Uh, the example that we were uh, showing in the previous tutorial was related to 20 bags uh, of M&Ms uh, uh, taken, sampled uh, from day one, from production day number one at M&Ms Corporation. Uh, each uh, uh, bag contains a number of uh, uh, M&Ms, and if we count uh, the M&Ms uh, contained in each bag and we plot uh, the distribution of data, uh, this uh, uh, is an, ex an example of a sample drawn from a process uh, and uh, the distribution that I obtain is the distribution relevant to that sample. So for each sample, we can obtain uh, a distribution. If I have uh, uh, n samples, I can obtain n distributions uh, and uh, uh, we will see that distribution number one uh, differs in shape and uh, um, position from distribution number two, which is relevant to our second sample, as well as distribution number th two uh, differs uh, from uh, distribution number three, which uh, derives from sample number three. These uh, uh, differences uh, occur even if all of the samples are drawn from the same process. If we plot each distribution which originates uh, from the relevant sample on a graph. This is what we will see. Uh, this is a graphical representation of uh, a distribution uh, um, obtained from uh, um, a sample drawn from our process, where we have here the two specification limits represented by these two uh, vertical bars. LSL is the lower specification limit, while USL is the upper specification limit. In the example of uh, uh, the MMM's bags, uh, these uh, two limits were two numbers. This was a number uh, 25, this was 31. This means that uh, each bag produced at MMM's corporation uh, will be within specifications if contains a number of MMM's included between 25 and 31. And if I take uh, first 20 bags from sample 1, which is drawn at uh, production day number one at MMM's corporation, I can count the M&Ms in each of the 20 bags and I can get a distribution like this, which is represented by this Gaussian curve, a distribution that I will call D1 because, because it derives from sample number one. And uh, this distribution is very tall and narrow compared to the two specification limit. What happens if I uh, draw uh, sample number two from uh, uh, day two at uh, uh, MMM's uh, uh, corporation, production day number two, I will have a different uh, distribution, counting all of the MMM's in each of the 20 bags, uh, and I will get a distribution like this. Uh, of course, we are talking about examples. The distributions can be different from uh, the ones you are seeing here, but uh, what is the concept of, of this slide is that the distributions vary over time and that D2 is different from D1. Why it is different? In this case, it has the same shape, so it is uh, tall in the same way, it is uh, narrow in the same way, but it has uh, a different uh, uh, position along the x-axis and it is asymmetrical uh, with respect to LSL and USL and in this case uh, this distribution number two is closer to the upper specification limit. If I move to a third distribution that originates from sample number three taken at production day number three at MMM's corporation I can have a distribution like this which has the same shape so um, tall as the previous two, uh, same uh, um, 
narrow this in the same way, uh, but a different position. In this case, this uh, third uh, distribution is asymmetrical and it's closer to the lower specification limit. And so on, I can have uh, uh, D4, distribution number 4 from day 4, which is well centered with respect to USL and uh, LSL, but uh, um, short and wide with respect uh, to the previous ones. And I can uh, move to distribution uh, 5, uh, which is the same as distribution 4, but very centered on the upper specification limit, while D6 uh, is uh, uh, the same as the previous two, but well centered on the lower specification limit. So the concept is distributions vary over time, even if related to samples that are drawn from the same process. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we gave a brief explanation about CPK and PPK indexes. Uh, uh, CPK and PPK indexes can provide a clear forecast of how my process uh, will be in the future able to produce products within predetermined specification. And when I'm talking about predetermined specification, I'm talking about USL and LSL. Um, in order to obtain said forecast, uh, we don't need a lot of data, just few data, for example, uh, the 20 bags taken from day one uh, of production at MMS Corporation uh, are needed, are sufficient to have um, these uh, two values that can provide the uh, forecast of how my process in the future will be able to produce product within predetermined specification. What does this mean in the case of MMM's corporation? That uh, I want to have an idea based on the first 20 bags sampled at production day number one. I want to have an idea based on that distribution of what will be the um, percentage rate of conforming units or conforming bags. And conforming means that they have to contain a number of MMMs between 25 and 31, for example, over the next year, considering that in the next year I will produce not 20 bags, but 100,000, 1 million, 10 millions of bags. Let's try now to make some logical considerations in order to build the CPK and PPK formulas. Uh, not knowing them, so I will not show uh, immediately the CPK and PPK formulas, but I will simply make some logical consideration in order to understand what they could be the formula, in order to guess, in order to argue what will be the mathematical formulas of these two indexes. And uh, in order uh, to provide a forecast on how my process will be able to reflect the USL and LSL, because these is the purpose of CPK and PPK indexes, the two uh, indexes need to have formulas that will have to take into account what? Of course, USL and LSL, because I need to <laughs> uh, provide a forecast basing on what percentage will be inside the, uh, the specification USL and LSL, but not only, the two formulas will have to take into account uh, how well the distribution, which is at the end a Gaussian curve, obtained by my few data will be within USL and LSL. Let's focus on this uh, second aspect. Uh, what does it mean a distribution well within USL and LSL? A distribution will be well within USL and LSL if it is uh, narrow, as you can see here, this distribution is uh, very narrow with respect to the window given by the difference between USL and LSL and not uh, wide. So if my first 20 bags from production day number one at MMM's corporation uh, originate a distribution like this, I can have a good confidence about the future production and uh, uh, future productions at MMM's corporation, while if I obtain from my first 20 bags a distribution like this, I will not be so confident on futures production and I will expect that some of the bags uh, a considerable amount uh, uh, of <clears throat> percentage rate of bags will be outside the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit. So this curve is not good. Uh, again, a distribution will be well within USL and LSL if it is centered. As you can see in this case, this, distribu this distribution is well centered uh, with respect uh, to the two limits, USL and LSL. And not asymmetrical because, again, 
if uh, from my first 20 bags uh, taken uh, at production day number one uh, at MMM's corporation, I obtain a distribution like this, I can be very confident of my future productions to have uh, all of the bags produced over the next year within specifications. But if I obtain from my first 20 bags a distribution like this, well, I will not be very confident of my future productions. Um, well, based on what we have seen so far, CPK and PPK formulas uh, will have to include USL and LSL. This should be obvious. Uh, a parameter that can provide an estimate of how narrow is our distribution, which is at the end the Gaussian curve, with respect to USL and LSL, and a parameter that can provide an estimate of how centered is our distribution, which is a Gaussian curve, with respect to USL and LSL. But uh, we already know from uh, our previous tutorials that the standard deviation, which is sigma, is a perfect estimate of how narrow or wide is my distribution. And the mean, represented by x bar of the distribution, is a perfect estimate of its position along the x-axis with respect to USL and LSL. So the mean tells us very well how symmetrical or asymmetrical is the distribution, which is at the end the Gaussian curve with respect to to USL and LSL. Well, based on our logical considerations, CPK and PPK formulas shall include USL, LSL, Sigma, and XPAR. And now we are ready to discover the CPK formula. It is the lower value between CPL and CPU. Oh my God, two additional indexes. So what are they? Don't worry, they are very easy. This is the CPL and this is the CPU. And the CPK is simply the lower value between the two. But let's have a look at the formulas. The CPL uh, is uh, <coughs> x bar minus lower specification limit divided by 3 sigma, while the CPU is the USL, the upper specification limit, minus the x bar divided by 3 sigma. And we can see <coughs> that both the terms uh, include all of the terms uh, that uh, should have been taken uh, into account uh, considering our logical considerations. So, in fact, they contain both sigma at the denominator, they contain both x bar at the numerator, and while CPL include the lower specification limit, CPU includes the upper specification limit. But since uh, the CPK is the lower of the two, CPK considers all of the four terms, uh, and uh, that's exactly we will uh, we we were expecting uh, basing on our logical considerations so now we have to, we have to understand why is the cpk the lower value between cpu and cpl if we look at this graph um, uh, which represents our first scenario we see a narrow and well centered uh, gaussian curve distribution uh, where the red vertical bar represents the mean uh, of my distribution, which is uh, equidistant from the LSL and the USL. So the mean is equidistant from LSL and USL. So if I look at the two formulas of CPL and CPU, I can immediately appreciate that the two formulas uh, provide the uh, same value. So CPL equals CPU and at the end uh, equals CPK. Why? because they have the same denominator, 3 sigma, where sigma is the standard deviation of this distribution, while at the numerator CPL has uh, x bar minus LSL, which is exactly this distance, while CPU has uh, at the numerator USL minus x bar, which is exactly this distance. But these two distances are the same value, because the mean is equidistant from LSL and USL. So the two terms uh, are equal and the two terms equal the CPK because the CPK is the lower value between the two but if the two values are the same value CPK will be the same value as well but we have another scenario where the curve again is narrow and tall with respect to USL and LSL but it's not centered it's completely asymmetrical uh, as I can see from the red vertical bar, which is very close to the upper specification limit. And what happens? It happens that the CPL, if I look at the formula, is higher than the CPU. Why? Because they have the same denominator, but at the numerator, the CPL 
as a term which is represented by this distance, so x bar minus LSL, which is higher than USL minus uh, x bar, which is represented by this distance. So CPL has a greater numerator than the CPU with the same denominator. That's why CPU is the lower term of the two and CPU equals the CPK because CPK considers always the worst situation. If this distribution uh, originates from the first 20 bags taken, sampled from day one uh, of production at MMM's corporation, okay, I can immediately realize uh, from the value of the CPK that it will be easier for the next productions, it will be easier in the future productions to go outside of the specification limit by this side. So to go over the upper specification limit instead of going outside of the lower specification limit. That's why even if the CPL, which is the index that provides us an estimate of how easy it will be to go outside of this limit, is high, of course, but it doesn't care because I will have a high probability to go outside the of specification of the U considering the USL. So it will be the CPU, the most unfavorable index, and that's why in this case the CPK will equal the CPU. But we have a third scenario with, again, we have a curve which is asymmetrical with the mean which is closer to the USL instead of the LSL, but uh, the curve in this case, uh, differently from the previous one, is short and wide. What does this mean? That, uh, again, the CPU will be the lower value between the CPU and the CPL, so the CPK will be the CPU, but in this case, the CPU will be a very low value. Very low value because of this distance, which is a very uh, low value at the numerator. But considering a curve which is uh, uh, short and wide, the sigma at the denominator will contribute to decrease uh, uh, tremendously the value of the CPU. So in this case, the CPK will be the CPU, but the CPU will be a very unfavorable number. If I consider the CPU and CPL formulas, the more sigma is a small value, considering that sigma is at the denominator of both terms, okay, sigma is at the denominator of both formula, uh, formulas, uh, the higher uh, will be the values of CPU and CPL. So the more sigma is small, so the more the Gaussian curve is tall and narrow, the more I will have a CPU and CPL uh, high values, and in consequence of that, CPK will be high value as well. <coughs> but again, the more the distribution will be well centered with respect to USL and LSL, the higher will be the values CPU and CPL, and in consequence of that, CPK as well. Why? Because in this case, if the distribution is well centered, both of the terms at the numerator will be high because both will um, approach the maximum value. And when the two numerator terms will approach the maximum value, when the curve is perfectly centered with respect to USL and LSL. So at the end, when sigma is low, so when the distribution is tall and narrow, and when the distribution is uh, perfectly centered with respect to USL and LSL, I will get a very high CPK. And so a very good prediction, a very good forecast uh, that my process will be able, able to perfectly reflect uh, the uh, specification limits USL and LSL. But now we are ready to discover the PPK formula. PPK is the lower value between PPL and PPU. Uh, two additional indexes, but PPL is represented by this formula while PPU is represented by this formula. But these are the same formulas that we have seen so far about uh, CPL. So CPL has the same formula of PPL and CPU is the same formula of PPU. So at the end, am I saying that PPK equals CPK? No. This is possible that they have the same formula. But the two values, PPK and CPK, are different. Why? Because the difference is in the sigma at the denominator. Because the CPK standard deviation is a sigma that is considered a within standard deviation. So it has a different name, but not only a different name, a different value. 
and the PPK standard deviation is considered as a sigma overall. So for the calculation of CPK, I need to consider sigma within, while for the calculation of CPK, I need to consider sigma overall, and sigma within differs from sigma overall. Well, uh, we need to know so far is the CPK provides an estimate of the potential capability of a process in producing products within predetermined specifications, which are USL and LSL. So the CPK provides an estimate of what the process could do in ideal conditions, in ideal situations, while PPK provides an estimate of the real capability of a process in producing products within predetermined specifications, which are again USL and LSL. So PPK provides an estimate of what the process actually does. CPK makes use of a sigma within, PPK makes use of a sigma overall. Dear all, this tutorial is finished. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please put a like in YouTube. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, done uh, it uh, so far. Thanks for having staying, uh, having stayed with me. Um, thanks uh, uh, for uh, such a huge number of subscribers that I have, and uh, I take the chance uh, to wish a happy 2022 uh, to all of my subscribers. Uh, I wait you all for the next tutorial that will be in Italian and will be again about the playlist of uh, uh, the non-normality of data. Thanks again for staying with me. I wait you at the next tutorial. Bye-bye.